Now this engine is special in two ways. The first way is kind of obvious because you've never probably seen a steam engine like this before. It's a three-cylinder radial with one crank pin. And stranger still, it's out of a tugboat. It's also got another interesting reverser. On engines like the Harrishoff and certain others like Geyser, the eccentric rotates around the shaft and changes phase. Whereas this one, the eccentric moves across the shaft on a set of wedges. A lot of other engines did that. Fricks did that. George Eli Whitney, uh, the Ida F engine that he built did that. A lot of engines that are generator engines with, uh, with single arm governors, double arm governors, vary the uh, distance of the eccentric away from the center to cut off. This being maximum travel and something toward the center like that being minimum. This one here, because the wedges are not, the eccentric doesn't go to the middle of the shaft, the phase and the travel vary. So here's minimum travel and maximum, but the phase angle changes like this. So this engine does cut off. Very elegant way to do it. Just one eccentric and a set of movable wedges, and that's all there is to it. And of course, the counterweight has to be massive to counterbalance all three cylinders. Even though all the crank pins rotate in unison, the cylinders are actually out of phase with each other by 60 degrees. So counterbalancing gets a little interesting with this guy. I didn't know this until Alex Ellsworth told me. But this engine belonged to and was restored by a dear and treasured friend of mine who is very upsettingly no longer with us by the name of Richard Gibbons, a Louisiana local. This engine was buried in his yard along with another one that I can't remember right now. I think it's here somewhere, but uh, Dickie Gibbons would come up to an engine show that I attended as a child. I was only 10 years old when I met him. I was about that tall at Mystic Seaport. They would have the Antique Marine Engine Exposition every year. And I, start, I found it by accident with my father and I started going there. I became a regular, I became an engineer there. I met a lot of good people there. In fact, that's why I wore this shirt right here. Is, these were some very good times in my life, and this engine was built by another dear and now dead friend of mine, Don Favell, who was a master craftsman and a British expat uh, who helped foster my love of all things British. But we used to have a great time there. The gang at Mystic Seaport uh, were very unpleasant on the whole, but they did excellent things there for a long time. They had, they, whenever I went down there, there was always something cooking. And for all the crap and nonsense I got from that angry bunch of people, I learned quite a lot from them. But the Louisiana gang couldn't have been more opposite. They, they taught me so much and they were always so pleasant to deal with. The Louisiana flywheelers is what I think they're called. Jamie Hurry, Dick Gibbons, JB, um, Others I can't remember the names of right now. I'm terrible with names. But they would always bring up an incredible collection of gasoline engines, or early gas, diesel, make and break, spark ignition, hit and miss, and steam. And Dickie Gibbons, he gave me, well, he showed me how to pour Babbitt bearings. He showed me how to rebore a cylinder. He showed me all of my fundamentals when I was a little kid. He was another one of those guys for me, like Bob Miriam was. But um, one day he came to the show with this immense box of old antique books, you know, engine, engine power plant, marine setup books, stuff from the 1890s, you know, thousands of dollars of books. And he gave it all to me and he said, here, take this. I want you to have it. You know, I, I feel like you'd be a good person to have that. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to show you some of those books in another video or something. But, um... He had Parkinson's, and the year after, I, I would see him once a year at the show, but he went back, and the next year he wasn't there, and I said, where's Mr. Gibbons? And they told me he had gotten up on top of a truck to do something, and because he didn't have mus muscle control or something, he fell off the truck and smashed his head onto a slab of cement, and that was the end of him. And uh, I cried my eyes out for several days. 
he was very special to me and a lot of other people. Alex knew him. I did not know Alex Ellsworth knew him. And that was one way Alex and I connected, is when I talked to him, we uh, both realized we both knew Mr. Gibbons. That man did more for, for old engines than probably anyone in this country besides people like Conrad Milster um, and, and Robert Miriam uh, in modern times. You know, they, they were some of the biggest advocates of old, old steam engines and, and other things that you'll ever find anywhere. And I miss them very much. So we're gonna run this. Uh, this is a really interesting one because it's got simpling valves there and there, so you can put high pressure steam all the way over to low pressure. So no matter where your crank is, you can get it moving. We've been warming it up like that for a while. So we're gonna close this one first. into the engine. It would push on the big ends and bend the main rods. It would also squeeze the cranks in like this and break them. It would wreak havoc. The thrust of the propeller needs to be transferred to the hull by the thrust bearing. In this case, it's mounted to the engine frame, so the engine frame pushes the boat hull along. In most other cases, the thrust bearing is mounted right to the hull with the engine separately driving the shaft. These are to protect the engine from the forces of the propeller both backwards and forwards. This thrust bearing you see right now needs to be adjusted and taken up. It's not suitable for that. The play in the crankshaft could harm the engine in the thrust bearing. So if this was ever to go in a boat again, we would have to really recondition that. I right now am trying to re-pour a Babbitt thrust bearing in George Eli Whitney's Ida F engine, which is going to be a very interesting challenge. So that is the W3 of Ricky Gibbons, but I wish he was here right now. I wish I could have uh, seen this run while he was still alive. 